Well, we talked about last week what, Robert? What did we talk about? We were really focusing on getting you to understand what the difference is between 3D, 4D, and 5D. It's what we called it. And basically the initial part was, you know, your your ego that you live in now, the everyday person that people are living in normally, um, is uh, the 3D. And the 4D would be the person that evaluates and judges that person, you know, the person that's always been with you all your life, that even as a small child was the same person that is now. And that person kind of evaluates and says, oh, should I do that, should I not do that, and kind of... Um, uh, evaluates whether the ego did a bad thing, did, should I have done that, that kind of thing. And then we went from there and we backed up and said, hey, wait a second, who is that recognizes that that uh, 4D uh, exists? And then we realized that as we step back into that place that we lose the judgment and then that was, that's our soul. And so we were hoping that people would walk through that over the week and kind of get used to, you know, getting in touch with your soul, the non-judgmental non you um, that just loves you and um, that sees your journey. That's and, awesome. Yeah. So tonight, if you guys are just joining me on Living a Healthy Lifestyle, I'm Carrie K. Davis and this is Robert Anderson. We started a series last week um, and it's going to blow your mind about our spiritual journey. And Robert was just going over some of the stuff we talked about last week. So as people are popping on, wave and say hello. We really appreciate you guys jumping on and listening to um, you know, what we have to say. It's really awesome. To we're not going to be selling grow. anything. You won't be asked to spend a, yep. a dime. You won't. Um, we're just going to give you some food for your soul. And isn't that what you need right now? That's why you're here. There's no mistake. Yep. So I like to start out with, um, you know, just saying a real quick prayer. And I want to pray for all you guys that are jumping on tonight. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful, beautiful day. Wherever you guys are in, in, the, in the United States or overseas, um, we just wanted to come on here tonight and we just want to glorify you, God, in everything that we do. And talking about our spiritual journey, Lord, we just know that you're going to walk us through each step and help us and help other people. And you're going to bless this, this TV show someday. Um, praise God. So I thank you so much, for Lord, for all the many wonderful blessings that you've given me. And we say these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, anyways, if you guys just joined us, we are talking about our spiritual journey. So, I wanted to read a devotional before we get started. Um, and this is about prayer. So, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. Amen. And it will be yours. And that's Mark 11:24. Two things about prayer are truly amazing. God listens when we pray. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. You may not have much clout anywhere else, but when you pray, God listens. We seldom pray. We have the greatest privilege imaginable, access to the control center of the universe. Yet we rarely use it. Our lack of prayer surprises God. Through the prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel he lamented, <laughs> I'm not very good at reading, I sought for a man among them who would stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Upon learning that Sodom and Gomorrah were going to be destroyed, Abraham did not rush to warn the cities, nor he chose to standing before the Lord. He chose to remain standing before the Lord. When God said the golden calf warranted the nationwide death penalty for Israel, Moses interceded and saved them. One translation of Exodus. So Moses soothed the face of God as an obscure priest by the name of Belinus had begged God not to send the plague. It was also checked. You say, why place such a premium on prayer? Simply because when we work, we work. When we pray, God works. So when we pray, God works. That's amazing. 
It goes right into what we talked about last week, where we were saying that God will never give you more than you can handle, but if you give it to God, then he can give you what he can handle. Yes, I love that. I love that when you said that last week. So when the two of you get together on anything and pray about it, my Father in Heaven goes into action. Does any other activity promise such results other than prayer? Did God call us to preach without ceasing? Or have a committee meetings without ceasing? No, but he did call us to pray without ceasing. So prayer is really important, very important. When you really start to develop a relationship with God, you realize he's with you always. So why don't you just continue that conversation throughout the whole day? You don't have to be in a special place. And that's not saying that sometimes God doesn't lead you to a special place to have a conversation with him or for him to be able to perform a miracle sign for you. Um, okay, he'll do that. Okay, but you don't have to have that to have that hourly, minute by minute relationship with him. When you realize that he's love and he's there to support you along your way and that he actually is there to have a conversation. Okay, conversations mm -hmm. go two ways. Okay, and when you develop your ears, like we've been talking about, um, then you can work with God and stay on path and see the joy and magic all around you. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a promise. And if you, again, uh, if you haven't seen my three amazing stories, go to Robert Anderson Love Wins on YouTube and watch the three amazing stories. They're there um, as a gift to you um, to get you to understand how to talk to God, how to ask for things, how to know how to ask for things. Because you don't want to ask for the wrong things, okay? <laughs> because God's giving you choice. He'll give you the choice to do the wrong thing. Okay, so we're going to, it not only shows you how God works and uses anyone, okay? Yeah. Because in the stories, he uses a drug dealer, he uses a a gambler, um, to, to, to fulfill his promise of giving you what you ask for. Okay, that's what happens in the story. It's real stories. God okay? uses people to interact with other people. I've met lots of people. And he's Robert. not judging you. He's not judging you now. He didn't judge you yesterday. He's not going to judge you tomorrow. He loves you. Get it that he loves you and stop judging yourself. And realize that he, his heart is hurting if you're not having a conversation with him throughout the day. And we're going to teach you how to do that because ultimately, as you begin to love yourself, you're going to start to feel that love that surrounds you. You are in a, such a loving universe and it's pushing you forward in your understanding of unconditional love that it has for you. Wow, that is so inspirational. So if you just joined us, it's Living a Healthy Lifestyle, and I'm with Robert Anderson tonight, and we're doing a five-part series that just started last week on our spiritual journey. So what Robert's wanting to talk about a little bit tonight is um, the second part of the first part, basically, <laughs> of our spiritual journey. So um, so Robert, in our, in our spiritual journey, we, d we just talked about how important prayer is is so um you know tell me something that you've actually had come to you in prayer in in solid you know when you're when you're spending that one-on-one -on -one time with god um you know something well you could uh, i ask for all kinds of things but ultimately i always ask that if you know he'd make the choice <laughs> because he knows things i don't right but, but i'll give you a an ego thing that I did ask for that um, is is clearly a miracle that can't be denied. Okay, so earlier on in my years, I ran into a yard sale that I was kind of led to, I guess, um, because I found a gift for me there, and it was a hundred-year-old saxophone. It was a sea sax, and it was pretty tattered. Um, and so I got it for next to nothing, and I had no idea how to play a sax at all. But for some reason, and I'm told this isn't supposed to happen, but it did for me, um, I picked it up, and I, I would sit on my front porch, and I would somehow play it, and people would gather around and listen, and it was a beautiful thing. Wow. But ultimately, the, the pads, these, this was a very old sax, the pads were tattered, and they got to a point where they really needed to be replaced. I couldn't play it anymore, and so it was sad. Um, but ultimately, I, I 
didn't actually try to get them replaced for a while, and then when I did, it, one of the bars um, got bent, and it's a hundred year old sax, they don't make them anymore. So that sax was essentially dead in the water. Well, here's where I get to the miracle story, or God's blessing, how he answers your prayers, how he gives you what you ask for. Um, and uh, so I said, God, you know, I really, I, I miss my sax. I really want that sax again. And, and I know, you know, it sounds crazy, but can you get me, you know, one that is just like it? I know it was 100 years old, but, you know, can it be like where it's kind of, you know, workable, you know, it's refurbished or something? And so then about, I guess it was almost a week later, I don't know how many days in particular, and he doesn't always work this quick, so don't, it's divine timing, so you got to give up the timing part. Yeah. Okay, but uh, he told me again, and he's done this before, um, he sent me, he said, go to Facebook and look for the sacks. I just got that intuitive knowing, and again, as you continue to hear and, and develop your ears, you'll get that. Um, and so I went on there, and I, I, did, I put in the C sacks, a wish brewster or whatever, the, the kind of sacks I had, and one showed up. Yay! Praise and God. it was That's awesome. 15 miles down the road. It was refurbished, and it's a beautiful thing. So you asked God for a sax, yes. and you got a sax. I got a sax that was 100 years old, exactly. It was only a few numbers off of the one that I had before. Wow, he likes to play saxophone. I play guitar, um, just walk around with it, even though I don't really know how to play yet, but I'm learning. So I think that what we think about, we can bring about. So tell us a little Thoughts bit. Thoughts are certainly things. Without tell a doubt. us a little bit about um, what you were talking about. Um, the ego construct. Yes. Yeah, that's the important thing that we want to cover today because we brought you into knowing about how to get in touch with your true inner self. And you're going to have to continue to practice that. This is, con consider it like playing a sax, okay? You, yeah. you pick up the sax, you're not going to know how to or play it. You're going to play it really bad. You're yeah. going to get better. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. And this is the same. It's really true with anything that's of any value in your life, isn't it? Okay, so we're just going to speak truth here. This is not going to be an overnight process. This is a journey, and you've got to start to trust the journey. The journey brought you here. The journey is exposing you to this information now so that you can absorb it and, or, and learn your truth with it. Okay, so how do you know what's your truth and what's ego construct? That's what we really want to get at today. That's the meat that I want to give you, but I want to reiterate, you really should listen to the last show and make sure you go through that process at least once a day and really just try to continue the conversation throughout the day. Ideally, God would be very, very happy then. Think about a parent with his child if he was able to, you know, just have that regular conversation. That would bring him joy. That would bring God joy with you. And just so you guys know, um, Robert Anderson is going to be able to um, put this series together for us so that we can do our homework. Um, we can come and we can watch the, you know, the we can watch them as many times yeah, as we'll we want. Yeah, we'll make so you can see them so, um, but, on a regular basis. So, the, so share them with you people. shared with me the ego and the love. The mm -hmm. Like, let's, for instance, let's do a relationship. You know, somebody's in a relationship. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the eagle, the eagle, I'm ego. saying it wrong. Ego, E-G-O. <laughs> I'm thinking of flying edging in the God sky out. like an Edging eagle, God out, that's an easy way to remember it. Yeah. Yeah, so that and a love relationship. Okay, well, you know, there is ego love, okay, and that's what most people are used to, sadly to say, but we've been living in an ego consciousness, so it's kind of makes sense. But an ego love um, is really one that is needy, that has to have control, really. You know, and, and the person has to be who you think they should be, or, or these kind of things. You start to project things on another person. Instead of letting that person be beautiful, and here's a, what comes to me as our um, analogy to cover this and make it so you can visualize it. If you see a flower, Okay, then you can, if you really love it, then you're going to want that flower to grow and be the best flower it can be. So you're going to nourish it. You're going to keep it where it is. You're not going to change it. You're not going to say, oh, wait, let's snip, snip, and throw it in a vase. So throwing it in a vase is the ego love. That's why people in their relationships, they feel like they lose themselves. It's because they're suddenly in this ego construct 
that the other person's belief systems and your own belief systems created. And that's what we want to get you to identify now is what are the ego constructs that are controlling you and what they basically are self-made prisons. Okay, so it's whatever other people, it starts at an early age when you're, you're taught that you're separate from everyone, and then from there, you're taught who you are. Like, I'll give you a good example. I used this actually to my daughter's advantage when she was born. I told her what a fast learner she was, and I continued to tell that to her forever. And because I tell that to her, at least I feel that way, it, that's why she's just like the fastest learner I've ever met. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's so, pretty incredible what yeah. your ego does. But what it also, in that way, I use it to free her, to empower her. But most people use it to restrict you. And then you see this on a daily basis as people try to make you feel guilty for things. And even our own egos try to make us feel guilty ourselves. But everybody has choice. And that's the thing that you got to remember. Remember God's one rule everybody has choice. That's mm -hmm. the real Yeah. Okay, so. What is that? It's the notifications pop up. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so everybody has choice. And so what you need to do before you can make your choices is you need to figure out who's already trying to control you and who are you allowing to control you. Who are you allowing to, to keep you from living your passion? Who are you allowing to keep you from your truth? Who are you allowing to tell you who you are? Amen. And because all of that is the ego edging God out. Well, it's holding you back, too. Like, um, I went through that where I was in a lot of relationships myself that were ego-based. And I've been seeing where there is a huge difference in the ego-based and the love-based. Well, certainly, know, in it's one a you feel compliant. In a relationship. You, know, you go in there, la 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 la, and then all of a sudden the cage comes down. Okay, the ego construct. Well, this is how I think you should be in a relationship, right? Yeah. This is my belief system. The long, long, of the long arm of the law and, comes and down so, on you. And, and it can be anything. You know? Yeah. It could also be like, um, you know, I told. I would just to to throw the off the cliff here. I don't believe people should eat chocolate. You know. But, yeah. Oh my gosh, you eat chocolate! I can't love you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's really yeah. the ridiculousness of it. Because if you truly love anybody, you love them. You'll let them you be know? themselves. You don't say, "Oh, I love you," but you need to be different. <laughs> no, yeah. and that's what you got to get is that when you go into your own truth, okay, and you start to, you're going to start to go, "Oh my gosh, I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of bars here," you know, in my prison. <laughs> And it's going to take a little bit of time before you're going to get the strength to get out of those bars, so be kind. So last week you talked about the prison in our mind, which is the battlefield of the mind, Absolutely. right? Yeah, this is all the battlefield of the mind. Okay. Oh, well, actually the soul. This is a spiritual journey. <laughs> the mind is the 3D. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the battlefield of the mind basically what is being played in our head over and over and over again is the negativity and all the negativity that we see around on TV on the, you know I don't even watch TV that's a good thing I, this program. I don't watch TV and it's not positive program and for sure. uh, yeah I just try I try so hard to fill my mind full of positive things I even have positive affirmations that I'm saying every single day. Okay, but let's also be clear here that you can't be in the middle of the garden and say there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. Oh yeah, that's true. There's always <laughs> back over here. So I'm out of the picture. I was <laughs> yeah. sorry. About that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, don't don't be in the middle of your garden saying there's no weeds, there's no weeds. Um, and we have a, a lot of us have a tendency to do that when we don't want to face a weed that we really need to pull. But don't worry about it. Divine timing um, will take care of things. Um, and that's where we want to get you to at the end of the five series. At the end okay, of the, yep. that, uh, to give you a destination point. We want to get you to a point where you are so comfortable in your own truth and you've developed your own voice to be able to speak your truth. Because right now, as you find your truth, you're going to notice you can't really speak it. 
because we're going to need to develop that skill as you know what you need to speak. But you can't speak it till you know it. So we want you to develop that skill again that we covered in the last one to get into your, your into your soul and and kind of find out what you really need to heal and find out what your real passion is why you're here. You're going to know. I'm not going to tell you, but you're going to know. And as you continue to be able to have those conversations with God, um, then you're going to also get a lot of information directly from Him. Uh, and that's going to be a beautiful thing for you. The one thing that you really need to trust in right now is that He loves you unconditionally and that He really, really, really does. He really, he really, 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 really does, does love us. And you know what? I can't tell you how many of my beautiful friends who are tapped in have been telling me that we just, I don't know, I, I started reaching out to them because I was like, there is a celebration in heaven right now Amen. that is that I'm blinded to why, but I can feel it. And all yeah. and so many other people can feel it. So let's celebrate with our victory because you know God wins. Love wins. Love is the truth. God is the truth. And we're gonna help lead you to yours so that you can empower other people as well to find theirs that's really witnessing it's not coming over and hitting you over the head with the bible because i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell you that i believe in having a relationship with god and that's what i'm going to show you how to do it's about the relationship that has what that is what's changed my life is i can talk to god well even if i'm sitting on the toilet i'm just saying you know i know i'm being funny but i can talk to god any time any day because he is love, he is listening, he is answering prayers. Um, I had blockages. We talked a little bit about blockages. Mm -hmm. For some reason, the blockages keep coming up in my mind. And we talked about that last week about the blockages. Um, I apologize, guys. I can't shut the notifications off. I can't shut off my notifications on my phone. Just so. consider the dings, little little God. You know, being anonymous, saying, hey, there's a good point to remember. Right. Okay, so, so just anyways. look at them as blessings. Because I'm going to tell you that everything is supporting your journey. And the more you see that, the more you're going to see the beautiful magic all around you. It really is. You're just, you know, you, you got to develop the eyes for it. So and talk about the blessings a little bit. Because we did already go through the blockages already. So. Yeah, well, I want to make sure that people start to understand who um, can actually... Uh, inflict an ego bar, if you will, on your prison. Um, and really, we, we got to think about all through our lives, our experiences help to build these uh, belief structures that develop your current ego. Um, and so in the beginning, it's your parents. They can tell you things about yourself that they are actually telling you about yourself. Okay, remember, the truth is within, nobody tells you who you are except for you, unless you start to believe in that and then you kind of create that ego construct. Amen. So it can be a parent, it could be a friend, it could be um, just an associate, it could be a book, it could be a video that you just started telling yourself that, oh yeah, that's me. Um, but if, if it's something like that where you're finding it, maybe it is giving you a clue, okay? But if it's an individual or uh, some other belief system pushing something on you that doesn't feel like it's in alignment with your soul, just recognize it's not alignment in your soul. You know what I mean? So it's not true to you. It's not true. So explain when they are in alignment. When they are in alignment with your soul, you're just, you feel truth. You, you, it just it feels right. It's your internal guidance. Everybody has it. We've just been taught not to listen to it. Um, but your internal guidance can lead you astray. But if it does, it's normally for your spiritual awakening. Um, so you may actually be afraid of something, and that's really because of a trigger that something, tri you know, something in your environment somebody, triggered somebody that. Somebody said something right? to you, right? and so that that made your your you notice this this pain or whatever uh, you associated with it and then you can bring that and you can start to deal with it and you can analyze it you can learn from it and then you can let it go because let you gotta go. let it go let, let it go, go. Let, let it go, go. <laughs> yes you do and it's a beautiful thing when you do because you look at your past 
Um, just as a learning tool and then let it go, the more you're going to be free to live your future. And the less Amen. that you're attached to the past will constrain you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of healing in your past. There's a lot of lessons that you've been blessed with. We talked about how horrible things can happen in our lives. But you know, ultimately, how God um, opens your heart, right? Is He breaks it open. You know, you have to break it open, and then guess what? Now your heart's open. Which is what happens. Sometimes we to get me. broken open and broken yeah. open and broken open, and it hurts. But it's a spiritual journey, so be be blessed by each one of those moments where suddenly you're able to feel a whole new level of love. So, like for instance, we talked about last week how I was in this cocoon. Right. After my husband died for 13 years, yeah. and then I have this rebirth mm -hmm. and now I'm this beautiful butterfly yeah. that that is not in the cocoon anymore I've had my spiritual awakening mm -hmm. and so if you just joined us we're talking about that spiritual journey <laughs> and uh, you may notice again her energy is different this week than it was last week because you went through several spiritual steps over the week oh I uh, did and, and spiritual <laughs> the spiritual journey is not necessarily a lappy ha ha journey all the time um, um, but it is it it is a beautiful thing um, and you know we come but there like anything in life it's cyclical so you're gonna have your ups and your downs um, but you just got to be Evan grateful flow. for them both ebb and flow yeah, but you, but you can see the growth in someone, and that's what I want you to recognize, that if you look back at the last show, you'll see that her energy now is at a different level. So, our energies go to different levels based on our experiences and things that we go through then. It goes to a different level as you learn how to look at things from a different point of view. Oh, because, a different perspective. Correct. Um, so you look, start looking at things from a higher level, and then your energy is at a higher level. See what I'm saying? See the correlation? Yeah, so like, like I'm going to pass this test. I'm going to ace this test. Right. And I aced the test today. Yay, Yay, right? Yeah. So, because that's what I said. I said that all week long. And I yeah. did have the F-E-A-R, which mm -hmm. that is... False evidence appearing real. Yep, false evidence appearing real is fear. So we ought, and we should not fear at all. And right. I did. God does not give you a life of fear. He does not wish fear for you. It's false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Because so, God wins. And God does win. Does and win. so what happened to me is I talked about how I was going to pass this test. Right, and now, we talked about the that, test about how you we changed your focus. Initially, you were focused on I, you know, all the minutia on the path. Right? You were like, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta control, 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 ego, ego, ego. Okay? And oh, then yeah. we said, you know what? You gotta really just let God have it. <sighs> and know, He'll give you the knowing of what you need to do to get there and all that and just follow that. But what you're gonna focus on is the end result of the passing test. And so you started to do that. Yeah. You started to get empowered. You were, you were led to the information that you needed to to give you the strength to have the fruition of your wish. Wow, so this show that we're doing, it's basically about your spiritual journey. And every week I go on a spiritual journey and Robert's just enlightening me on the things that are happening through my week. Mm -hmm. I'm having things that are happening, you know, we all do. And it's more dealing with these things with a good attitude and dealing it with gratitude and looking at things as blessings and not curses right anymore be grateful for it all because it's all for you it's all for you to continue your journey and to grow and to have joy happiness and a true understanding of what under, unconditional love is rather than ego love and there are, there's lots of information out there for you to look at it's a great thing just to, uh, i found in the, in the beginnings of the journey to have that information handy so that I could continue to uh, feed my uh, my brain that information um, and remember that this is food for your soul you know what I mean and food you're not expected to be perfect in a day and you're not ever actually expected to be perfect and you need to let that go because guess where that came from perfect is a falsehood perfect is an ego bar 
it's another prison bar. Absolutely. If we feel like we have to be perfect all the time, we'll never get anything accomplished. The, yeah. Yeah. The only thing that's perfect is God's timing. God's timing. So all these things that are happening to me in my spiritual journey, 13 <laughs> years of being in the cocoon is now God's timing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you had a lot of lessons to learn while you were in that cocoon. And you gained your strength. You gained your wings. Now you're drying them off. You haven't even really begun to fly yet. Yeah, I haven't begun to fly yet. But I'm looking forward to that. Like the eagle soars above the storms. And I know I'm an eagle. In the name of Jesus, I know I am. You are too. Um, so if you just joined us, Living a Healthy Lifestyle, we got a lot of people joining us. We've been talking about our spiritual journey. And we started the series last week. And it was just um, something that God put on my heart to help people. And I asked Robert to join in and help with it. And uh, we went over some really awesome stuff last week and this week. I'm going to give you just a message right here in the middle that I really hope that you'll share. Because we're at a very pivotal, pivotal time in our in yes, our we are. country. Yes, we are. Um, and it, it wouldn't be right of me to talk about our spiritual journey if I didn't talk about our country's journey because you're seeing that journey reflected in our country right now. But right now we ha we're under attack, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Um, but I want you to know that the, the power of the enemy is in division. And we've been, we have this in our roots. We know, you know united we stand, divided we fall. And so we're gonna, we've seen division used in the mass and the virus and the uh, in race and now in the dis and disarmament and then now uh, assault on our police. Um, and ultimately it's all the United Nations agendas. If you aren't aware of that, you should be and you should start to look into it because it's truly treason. Um, but what I want to get across to you is not all of that right now. What I want to get across to you is you need to tell everybody that we need to be prepared to see some horrific things that they're going to do to try to divide us. There's going to be some people that are going to do some horrific things to other people of all kinds to try to divide us. And we've got to remember it's not us. Yeah, it's not us. Yeah. It's not the way we live. It's not the way we treat people. It's like when I go out in the world, I, I'm shaking hands with everybody, bud. If you want to call me the virus shaker, I guess you could, but I don't have the virus. I hug people. And, and I'm sending love. I, I'm, I'm, I'm shaking people's hands. Yeah. I'm spending time with people of every darn race if and creed. they want to hug. And I'm telling them that yeah. we're still united, and that's our strength. And, we, and I ask them to do the same. And so I ask you to do the same. Spread the word that as they do these horrific acts, and I don't know what they are. I'm just led to tell you that there's going to be some really horrific acts they're going to do, and it's going to try to divide us. And just remember, it's not us. It's the enemy. It's the enemy doing things to divide us. Because they want to disarm us, depopulate us, relocate us. But the good news is, is that the devil is underneath our feet. God wins. And God wins. And if you guys know that um, God wins the war, um, the devil was kicked out of heaven. The only reason why he's allowed to be here is because we are given the freedom to believe how we want to believe. God wants us to believe in him and wants to have a relationship with him. He and wants to empower you. Empower me is what he's done. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's Definitely. that's the key. What else do we have down there? Um. Well, can you check the time real quick? We don't want to take 7:34. All right, so we don't want to take up too much more of our of your guys' time. Oh yeah, time. people's reactions. Are but the, what are the people's reactions, um, and how do we trust in the journey and yeah. stay on the path? You know, we need to stay on the path. Right. First of all, you just need to sit back and relax and realize that your journey is supported, um, and so that gives that gives you confidence. And as your faith builds in the journey, then you're going to continue to realize your journey is supported and that God loves you, and that uh, He wants everything for you, and the desires that you have in your heart um, are, are your desires, and, and they deserve to be fulfilled. Your wishes should come true. Amen. And so the thing that we want to do is we want to really just look at um, 
getting clear on what is our desires and our passions. If, if you didn't have any of these people telling you who you should be and how you should live, you know, what would you do? Would you do anything different? Um, odds are you're going to find you would. And then you got to decide, you know, are you going to live in your truth or not? And then as you, you know, get there, I'd say that's about as far as you'll probably get in a week's time. Uh, is, then we can go next week. We can talk about um, how you develop your own voice. Because until you have a voice and you speak your truth, you're not going to be able to live it. it and it, there's a process to develop that, that skill. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, I live my truth, I talk my truth. But you know, if, you're, if you're in your ego, sir, you're, living, you're, you're talking your truth in your ego. But we're, we're talking about a little different level here. When you actually are living in your truth, you're going to have to stand your ground sometimes. And you want to do it in a very loving way. Amen. Yeah. So, um, we're going to talk about next week then, what you were thinking, what were, what was it that you wanted to talk about next week. Robert is doing the spiritual journey thing with me, and we come up with different things to talk about. But he's been through the spiritual journey, and I'm just starting this right now, you know, um, just got out of my cocoon and I'm this beautiful butterfly so yeah. well I think that at this point it's important that people just really focus on um, getting going through the process of meditation or if you will uh, you know noticing the, the 3d the 4d and the 5d um, getting clear on what your passions are I would recommend that you write them down you'll gain more clarity try to be as clear as you can I um, mean if you don't know then ask you know again yeah. whatever you ask you will receive um, and then I highly recommend that you do your homework and watch the three amazing stories on YouTube. Go to Robert Anderson Love Wins, hit the playlist, click on the three amazing stories, listen to those because there's going to be a lot of lessons there um, in a story format, which is the best way for you to learn. And we're also going to include all these videos for mm -hmm. you guys to watch. Um, on, on also on that site. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, what I'll do is I'll record them and put them on a playlist there. Because we want you to be able to tune in to to the uh, last week's show. If you just joined us, this is Living a Healthy Lifestyle. We're talking about our spiritual journey tonight, um, and so we're gonna put all these out for people to see them. And there is a little bit of homework for next week, um, and what we're gonna yeah. talk about. So, any last thoughts on anything, Robert? Um, I would just say, gain comfort and strength um, in your relationship with God. Just talk to Him. He's waiting to have that conversation with you. Um, and I would recommend that you go to a peaceful place. Get out in nature. Nature, you're going to find a lot of truth in nature. But just go out in nature. I recommend you either like take off your shoes. I kind of believe in the whole earthing thing. Stick your feet on the ground, um, and just kind of sit there and just have a, a peaceful Get connected moment. Connected with Mother Earth, like you said. Yeah. And and then be kind to yourself. Stop judging yourself. As you wake yourself up, okay, because that's what we're going to be doing here, um, then you're going to start to look back at yourself and you could start to get judgmental of what you may have done in the past. Just heal those things. Forgive yourself and forgive those other people. And that's one thing that we should probably speak on that we could run into yes, here I'm is forgiveness. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, talk um, about forgiveness is, is part of your journey. And part of the forgiveness is for yourself. Um, once you've learned to forgive yourself, um, because, and let's talk about that for just a second. Before you knew 2 plus 2 equaled 4, you didn't know 2 plus 2 equals 4. So are you going to judge your past self for not knowing that? No. Okay, so don't judge yourself for your journey. Um, and then, you know, forgive other people. How do you forgive other people, especially if they're still hurting you now? Um, and that's part, a part of this journey, too, is forgiveness. And so if you want to forgive people that are uh, maybe even still hurting you now or, or hurt you in the past, um, the best thing to do, first of all, is try to put on their shoes and have empathy for them and realize that hurt people hurt people. That it's not about it's not about you. It's about it's about what's going on with them. Right. You can you can be living when you're living in your truth. You're going to have people who are going to be hurt by something that you did that really had nothing to do with them. And basically what that is, is it's a trigger for them for their learning. Okay, so you gotta not take that personal. 
You gotta not take guilt on for their learning. Okay, just continue to live in your truth and in love. Um, try to help them understand um, how to heal that. And you know, as you grow in the journey, those God will you know guide you on those things when you're in those situations. But the most important thing is that you just stop taking those things on. Yeah. A lot of people take everybody else's energy on. Oh well, if I don't do this, then they're going to be upset. If I don't do it that way, they're going to be upset. If, if someone's going to be upset. Is that kind of a codependency relationship? Yeah, because if if they love you, they want you to do things the way that you should you feel is right for you. You know what I mean? And so, uh, it, if someone is doing that, realize that you're allowing them to. And it, it, the only way it'll ever change is if you change it. And the only way you're going to change it is to be able to develop your voice and be able to speak your truth. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to work on that. So we've been talking a little bit about the spiritual journey tonight. I see a lot of people have been joining, so I want to thank you guys for joining. Um, we're going to finish up soon. Um, I, I wanted to finish up with um, the five-step program, too. I want to talk a little bit about what was developed, you know, um, which is what we're really talking about is mindset, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's really important, too, though, going through this journey that we, we, we hydrate our body. We drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. Water is very important. Um, it helps flush out the toxins out of our body we need to be getting water like I was not a water drinker did not like water now I'm drinking it and it's just amazing um, we need to be getting great nutrition we need to be eating healthy mm -hmm. so our mind is alert and and our energy levels are up I think that has a lot to do with everything that we're going through too is what we're feeding our body with is how we feel. Well, you, so you're talking your body or your mind. What you feed it with is what yeah, you will become. Yep, yeah, the mindset. Th that's why I developed that program, which really technically it's just a five-step program that I work with my clients on, which is the mindset, water, and nutrition. And I also believe that exercise builds endorphins. It does. And helps us a lot of it. get going. Come over here. No. <laughs> he keeps wanting to get out of there. Bring it back. <clears throat> Anyways, it builds it builds the endorphins in our bodies, and they're great. Like yesterday, for instance, I took a bike ride. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to tell people that if you're not exercising, you're missing out. Well, you're movement. missing out Any because movement. you don't even have to exercise. Your move. body is like what, here's something crazy I do. I'm driving down the road instead of getting upset about being in traffic. I'm pumping this. Yeah. And you know what I'm doing? What I'm doing is not only am I keeping myself and in a great state want, of mind, you know, I'm having fun. I, I love this song. This is the kick. Okay. So I'm in a great state of mind. I'm having fun. I'm not getting upset because, hey, yep. I get to listen to this song. And I'm dancing. And guess what? I'm, I'm exercising all these muscles while I'm <laughs> here. And I'm moving quick, jerky movements. So you know, it's a quick to my mind that I'm excited. Yeah. And I'm controlling my own environment. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because and I've tried though I've tried that exercise to kind of get going you know and just start feeling good because that's that's what it's all about you know and that's that's why I love going for a bike ride or doing something you know doing the hula hoop for five minutes or doing one of your little exercises just kind of bouncing around a little bit right Any kind of you know to try to get yourself in a good mood because that really does it does really work that's awesome so any movement and any then, kind of movement just do a little bit and then do a little bit more and then do a little bit more at least like five anything minutes else, develop the skill at least five minutes a day is what they say of stretching too um you know a little bit a little bit at a time of stretching will help get the the body limbered up and is really really important for people that have uh, muscle issues. Mm -hmm. So, and then the final step is is sleep. So, Robert, how much sleep? And and, and tell us about REM sleep because I, I I believe that you know about REM sleep. I sleep REM sleep now. Okay. To where before I didn't. So. So you've been stopping watching your phone before you go to bed. Yeah. 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 A, a problem a, a lot of people have now is that they are in their phone. And, you know, I understand it. Uh, but when you expose your eyes to that light right before you go to bed, you're not creating the melatonin. So God actually has, like, normal cycles. You know, imagine if you didn't have a light bulb 
and, and the sun would slowly go down, then your body would know, hey, I need to start creating melatonin. And then that melatonin helps you get into your good sleep, which brings, you know, the axis is the REM sleep, which yep. is really where all the healing and good stuff happens. And so when people are in the light, then they're not functioning the same. The body doesn't create the melatonin. They don't get the quality sleep that they should. Yeah, and the difference in the sleep that I used to get and the sleep that I get now, it's just night and day. It's it's just awesome. So, and the body heals. Now, if you when can't you sleep. if you can't get rid of the addiction to the phone, there are things that you can put over your eyes to block the blue light. And I understand that that's supposed to help your body go ahead and create the melatonin. So. Oh, that's cool. Or turn off your internet at night. Yeah. Well, um, television really was the beginning of it. It was exposing our eyes directly to light uh, late into the evenings. Yeah. And so our, our sleep changed without anybody debating that one. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, listen, we didn't want to keep you for too much longer. I appreciate all of you guys jumping on here tonight. God loves you. Share the truth. But most Share importantly, um, you know, learn yours and then next week we're going to show you how to start um you know developing your voice so what's the homework tonight or starting and what would you recommend for our viewers we've got busy busy people out here um well you know they need to do a little bit of spiritual stuff i try to spend at least 30 minutes a day reading or um you know in my in my spiritual journey so what would you recommend well what I would recommend is that you do what your inner guidance is telling you to do. So if your inner guidance is telling you to do 30 minutes a day of something, then do that. If your inner guidance is saying, hey, I should you know, play those amazing stories on my way to work, I'll just you know, Bluetooth it into my car, um, so I'll make use of that. I used to call that car university. Yeah. Um, then maybe you could do that. I learn a lot um, in my car. But whatever yeah. your internal guidance is telling you to do, that's what you should do. That's my point. I'm not going to tell you what you should do because you already know. Your truth is inside. I'm just going to help you develop the ears and the wherewithal to not only know your truth, but to speak it live it and then shed light on the world with the rest of us yeah so i want to thank you for joining tonight but before we go i just wanted to ask does anybody have any questions um feel free to um put a question on and we can answer those you know you can go back and watch the videos later you can always comment um we're open to answer any questions that you have during the series and we're going to be putting the videos out there on, what is that again, Robert, for people that just joined oh, us? Just go to YouTube, Robert Anderson Love Wins. Just search for Robert Anderson Love Wins. And then you're going to click on the playlist and look for uh, the playlist. It's called The Three Amazing True Stories. Is that W-I-N-D-S? Wins? Wins, W I N E N S, yeah. W I N S. Oh, oh, wins, as in I won. Yeah. Robert, uh, yeah, Robert okay. Anderson, that's me. And then Love Wins, yay! Yay, Love Wins, okay, that's cool. Can't forget that. Awesome. Love Wins, God Wins. <laughs> yes. We're going to win together. We're all in this together, folks. You hear that from the enemy right now, and they're not with us, I'm telling you. But we're with you, and I'm going to help you find your power within. We're going to empower you um, to be you.